with that, we can continue to mean teachers are better role models. That's a nice title, but behind the scene, the idea is not that complex. You have some labeled data, you have some unlabeled data. And what you are trying to do is if you make some predictions on your unlabeled data and you use another model to make some predictions again on your unlabeled data, you want things to be consistent. You want these two models to give you the same predictions. That's the idea that's going to help you write down the loss function. You have a student model who is going to learn from a teacher. The student model is going to look at the uh, labels or your labeled data. You can think of that as the assignments, which are graded. You know the answers to them. So you can think of them as practice exams. And then at the same time, there are some uh, examples which are not labeled. So the student is going to keep practicing on its own. At the same time, the student is going to look at the teacher and trying to be consistent with what the teacher is predicting. The student and teacher have different parameters and they have different noise and you're going to notice why noise is important here. And then the consistency is that the predictions of the teacher should be consistent with the predictions of the student in a L2 sense while you're looking at different examples and different noises. Let's uh, first decide what is theta prime. Theta prime is going to be a moving average of the parameters of the student. That's why the name of the paper is mean teachers, because that's the average. So this is always the average model. But at the same time, this is not enough. First of all, if you have this type of a loss function, if theta is equal to, if theta prime is equal to theta, if there is no noise, you are subtracting a model from itself. And then if you sit behind the computer and train this, your model is gonna collapse. So whenever you are doing training, your model is going to find the simplest model because of the nature of stochastic gradient descent. And the simplest model here is that f is just a constant or f is just zero. That's a solution to this problem. And it's going to collapse. Having two different parameters is going to give you two different neural networks. One of them is not being trained. It's going to give you a target for the parameters of the student to adapt. And you're making things less likely to collapse. There is still an inclination to finding a trivial solution. And to avoid that, you're gonna introduce noise. What type of noise are you introducing? When it comes to your data, you can do data augmentation. If you have an image, flip it, look at it in a mirror, or look at crops of your image, which is equivalent to translation. Add Gaussian noise to your inputs. And these are different noise for the student and the teacher. Apply dropout or stochastic uh, depth so these sorts of randomness is going to help your model be less prone to collapsing to the trivial solution. So that's a major portion of the contribution. But even after all of these efforts, it's not enough. Your training process is still going to find a trivial solution. It's going to collapse. And you need to change the way that you're going to train things. Your student is going to have a cross-entropy loss function that's always going to be there plus this other loss function multiply by an importance weight. How much importance are you giving to this loss function? That is scale. You're going to change it from zero in your training process to the final round. It means that initially you're ignoring this consistency, and then gradually you're introducing more and more consistency. This is very similar, this idea, to a previous paper. We don't have time to cover that which is about temporal ensembling, which is similar to label propagation, that rather than maintaining an exponential average of your model, maintain an exponential average of the labels or label predictions on your training examples. Keep an exponential average of the outcome of the model rather than its parameters. So it's along the same lines. How does it compare? This is if you do supervised learning, if you have labels, these are the error rates. This is the case where you have uh, labels per each image. This is the case where you have fewer labels compared to, to the images. So 2,000 examples are labeled, and the rest of them are unlabeled. This is CIFAR-10. 
10 classes, GAN paper we covered, uh, temporal ensembling we don't have time to cover, but we just briefly mentioned it. Uh, virtual adversarial training is the paper that we just went through that's giving you this number in terms of the error rate. And these are the best to some extent, especially where you have very few labels. These are the cases where the other models fail or they are worse than the supervised only. The supervised only is training only on supervised data. You have a similar table for another data set, street view house numbers. Was everything clear? Okay, awesome.